Hey, Statics fans, it's time to start talking about forces. And a force is a push or a pull that acts upon some sort of an object. And what's important about forces is always an interaction between objects. And so we're going to talk about that in more detail here in a little bit. But the idea here is we want to start off with the uh, uh, fundamentals. I'm going to break forces down into two types. The forces that are two types of forces will be long range forces, and that will include gravity. That will be the main one that we work with in a statics class. But electromagnetic forces will also be long range forces. What does that mean? That means that one object can exert a force on another object from a distance. So for, if you think about the moon going around the Earth, the Earth pulls on the moon without touching the moon. It's acting on it from thousands of miles away. Um, if I jump out of an airplane to go parachuting, then the Earth is pulling down on me. It's not touching me, but it's still pulling down on me. It's acting on me from a distance. Uh, magnets, we played around with magnets as kids, and I can have one magnet attract another one or push another one away. Right, so magnets are also forces that can act at a distance. I could rub a comb through my hair if I had any hair, right? And I charge it up and then if I hold it above my arm, the arm hairs will be lifted up even though the comb is not in contact with the arm hairs, right? So that's an electrostatic force. So we've seen those before. We're not gonna to talk too much about electromagnetic forces. Magnetism and electrostatic forces fall into this category. That's a class, a whole other class in, in circuits or electromagnetic theory. But gravity is the long range force that we're gonna be concerned with in statics. What is that really? That's weight, okay? In dynamics, we'll talk about gravity between satellites and planets or something like that. But in, in uh, statics, we're pretty much gonna be sticking with weight. The other kinds of forces, I'm gonna break them down. These are all short range forces, meaning what? Very important, that means it must be touching. One thing must be touching another thing. All right, so the first of those is referred to as a normal force. And a normal force, as the name implies, <clears throat> means perpendicular. So that's gonna be, let's say, if I've got a, a surface here, the big board is a surface, put the block on top of the surface, then the surface is exerting a force on the block. So the two by four, is exerting a force on the block, and it's normal to the direction of the surface. So the surface right now is horizontal. So the normal force is up or down. It can go in either direction because it's a normal force. Is it up or is it down? Well, in this case, um, well, I'm, I'm gonna say it's both, and so we'll get to that later on. But the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. That's what the word normal means. You might recall that from mathematics. All right, so that's a normal force. It's always perpendicular to a surface. So if I, if I tilt this block, the two by four, if I tilt the two by four, the block is still having a force on it, but now that force still perpendicular to the surface, but it's not, either up, it's not up or down, it's at an angle. All right, so here it's up and down, here it's at an angle. Okay, so it's gonna be not exactly straight up, right? It's gonna be at an angle. And so that just depends on what the situation is. And I can put my finger in there to keep this from sliding off. There's still a normal force acting on the block, but it's, it's at a very steep angle in that case. All right, another force is friction. Friction is always parallel to surfaces. And that frictional force is gonna be between two surfaces. So as I slide the, bar, the block rather to the right, there's a frictional force to the left, right? So as I slide the block to the right, there's a frictional force to the left. Friction, and we'll get into this in more detail later on in the semester, friction always acts in such a fashion as to oppose sliding. Now you'll oftentimes hear friction opposes motion. That's often true, but not always. And a good example of that is a rolling friction. Like if we got a wheel going on, right? So here's <clears throat> Here's a wheel, if you will. And if I'm driving a car and my car wants to go to the left, then the wheel is going in this direction. It's going to the, to the right. Excuse me, I want the car to go to the right. So the wheel is, is to the right. Well, the frictional force is to the right, but the motion is to the right. That's not opposing the motion, but it's opposing the sliding. If there was no friction, the wheel would spin 
right? You can see with that piece of tape there that it's spinning. The wheel spins without moving. And so what's happening is the surface of the wheel down here where it's in contact with the two by four, the surface of the wheel is sliding, but it's sliding to the left. The surface is sliding to the left. And so the force of friction is to the right. So the frictional force opposes sliding, right? And it can be actual sliding or it can be intended sliding. Let's see, it's not gonna work, is it? There we go. All right, so what does that mean? If I, if I tilt this board a little bit down and to the left, the board wants to slide, excuse me, the, the block wants to slide down and to the left. And so the frictional force is up and to the right. Okay, the frictional force is up and to the right because it's, it wants to slide in this direction. Now it isn't sliding because the frictional force is strong enough to keep that from happening. But if I tilt it more, then the sliding begins and that frictional force will be up and to the left. So it opposes the intended sliding if it's not moving or the actual sliding if it is. So one of the things to keep in mind is that who's moving? Is it the two by four or is it the block, right? Doesn't matter. Friction doesn't care who's moving. All friction cares about is what direction are the surfaces rubbing, okay? And we're gonna talk about that in more detail when we get into Newton's third law but we'll get there in a little bit, so let's hold off on that. The last force that we want to talk about is a tension. A tension is a force usually exerted by a string or a cable, um, maybe a rope, right? You think of tension that way, and it's usually a pull, but it can be a push. And an example would be uh, your little red wagon when you were growing up, there's a, there's a, a steel handle attached to the wagon. And when I pull the wagon, I'm supplying a tension, or there is a tension then. The handle is exerting a tension on the wagon. And so that tension is a pull, but I can push that handle as well. And in that case, it causes a compression. And we'll get into compressions in more detail when we look at beams. But the compression is still going to be a force. I'm gonna consider that a negative tension, but it pushes. So tension is a pull, Compression is a push. The important thing about tensions or compressions is that they're always in the direction of the string or the cable or the beam, right? They're always gonna be in that direction. So these are the three short range forces that we'll be working with in statics. And then gravity is the one long range force that we'll be working with in statics. All right, so we'll start talking about force diagrams here in just a little bit. But this, these are the forces that we'll be working with, all right? And so I'll be talking about different kinds of forces on force diagrams. There'll always be one of these four forces. Again, we're gonna ignore the electromagnetic. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.